we did take a big hit and had to restructure the business. Um, possibly the most heartbreaking thing for me during the COVID period was the restructuring of Foundate um, and having to let go a lot of team members. Uh, but I'm glad to say that it did rebound quite strongly once the government eased um, the work from home rules. We haven't yet seen a big fall off in membership, but if this continues for a prolonged period, then we expect we will again. And are you worried that the pandemic has changed people's minds about co-working, co-fitness too? I mean, we're kind of now attuned to, to, to being alone or to, to social distancing. How does that kind of affect your business model? So actually there are opportunities and upsides for founding for the office co-working business in that a lot of SMEs or larger businesses that normally would not consider co-working are now interested in co-working because it affords the flexibility to, for them to upsize or downsize. It gives them opportunities to be able to do um, split team arrangements, you know, um, business continuity, best practices that way. So uh, there, that does balance the downsides. With the fitness and wellness industry, that one rebounded very quickly post-circuit breaker. Uh, what we have seen is that because people can't travel and with there's more disposable income, they're putting a lot more emphasis on self-care. So we, we've seen a strong increase in demand for fitness and wellness um, services, in particular the suburban location. How profitable is this business moving forward? I think we have moderated our expectations. Initially, when we merged Found and Collision 8 to become Found 8, we had huge plans to grow across the region. We are the Google for Startups partner. We anchor the innovation ecosystem, but we, didn't, we don't have physical presence in a lot of the other regional markets. So one of the ambitions was to have regional presence in five other markets. COVID put a halt to those plans. So the focus now really is on creating the best value impact and growth of opportunities and collaboration opportunities for the members within our existing um, Singapore and KL spaces. What about further expansion plans? In terms of regional growth, um, Co Collective is the one that we are most focused on because it's a first of its kind um, co-working for fitness and wellness professionals uh, concept. We've had a lot of interest from all over the world to expand Co Collective. Um, from Australia, New Zealand, the US. But the next step is actually to go more into the medical space and into the lifestyle, beauty, aesthetics um, space. We are speaking to a medical centre landlord who, who wants to bring Core Collective in as sort of a value added service in the way that a lot of office landlords have brought in co-working operators. Um, also, I've been approached by a hotel owner to um, curate the right we sort of pick and mix services that really amplify their brand positioning and differentiate them from, from other hotels. So those are the angles that we are um, right now exploring. When it comes to the property business itself, though, we are seeing thinning profit margins. How worrying is that? Very worrying. Um, and something that we've talked about at length, um, starting last year, but a lot more this year. Uh, and being a boutique property developer, we know we'll never be able to compete against the large developers, nor do we want to. Um, and therefore, our forte, I guess our um, advantage might be in innovating, uh, which is where the co-retirement idea comes into play. Uh, so it's not just a residential development in a traditional sense. There are service and programmatic offerings to it. It's a much more targeted segment of the market that I believe is underserved. Uh, this is also where Core Collective with the fitness and wellness services and Foundate with the innovation community could lend uh, richness to the co-retirement concept. So yeah, we are looking to uh, maybe move away from, from more bread and butter uh, boutique residential developments. But when you were finishing university, you received a letter from your father and your brother received a letter too. Now they both had quite different messages. In the letter to me, he said that I should um, spread the risk and uh, find my own sort of vocation and profession because less than 5% of family firms last past the third generation. And my brother and I being fourth generation, he wanted to sort of diversify the risk. Um, whereas my brother's letter said that he was um, earmarked to join the family business and take the helm one day. So yes, there were very different uh, messages, but um, it was not altogether a surprise. 
perhaps not a surprise and perhaps the way that traditional families work, but was it upsetting? Did you kind of feel like you had to prove yourself to, to get your path within the business? Yes, it was definitely a little bit of disappointment, you know, as, because I was ahead in, in terms of academic and, and, and timelines graduating. Um, I did wonder whether it was because I was a girl and he was a boy. Uh, but actually, I, I feel very fortunate to have been given the opportunity to explore other careers and, and been given the choice to join a family business rather than being expected to. And also because I'm not running the core business, I feel I have more flexibility mm. in, um, in sort of what direction I would like to take um, Orem in. How important was it to be able to prove to the elders that you had a different vision and to diversify in terms of trying to keep, I guess, the cohesion within the family business? Um, we were quite aligned already in terms of trying to diversify the entire group and not be so reliant on well, the construction part of the business. Uh, so there was ambition from the board and from myself to try to grow Orem land, but I don't think they foresaw that I was going to take it outside of just property development into co-working and into fitness and wellness um, and you know, hopefully into the co-retirement space, which is retirement resorts meets co-living, and then into the co-learning space, which is elder care combined with childcare. This is uh, this evolution of the vision uh, for Orem Group was not there from the outset, but I, they are still very supportive um, because it does, uh, I guess, work align, in line with the overall direction to diversify, um, and also building on our more mature businesses and the domain knowledge, the infrastructure, the know-how, the expertise to move into peripheral or adjacent areas, business models and markets. Um, that sort of portfolio strategy, everyone believes has good merit. Your elder son is only eight, your youngest is one, but would there still be, I guess, kind of hope that they would follow your path? Um, <laughs> I, when, when my father offered me the opportunity to join the family business and take over Orem Lan, um, I was not sure what to expect. I said I would give it two years. And at that time, I had no deep passion for real estate. Um, I just felt like I wanted to change. I wanted to give back to the family that has given me so much. I wanted to create more tangible value than strategy consulting, which was what I had been doing. Um, and I feel very fortunate that the role, the business really suited me. I'm not sure right now what role, what business might suit my children, mm. but if there is a match, then um, I would love you know, to see them take on, take over one of the businesses that I, I have started and really grow it and find their own, make it their own.